today we are going to study amortized analysis we will see what do we mean by amortized analysis with the help of an example we will see different methods of performing amortized analysis and finally we will see in detail an aggregate method of performing amortized analysis so first of all we will see what is amortized analysis and why there is need to perform amortized analysis one type of analysis that we already know is asymptotic notation basically what asymptotic notation does is telling the complexity of any algorithm which runs in best case worst case or in an average case but amortized analysis is different from asymptotic notation basically amortized analysis is a method of analyzing the cost which is associated with a particular data structure which averages out the worst operation on it so difference between amortized analysis to asymptotic notation is that amortized analysis is performed on a complete data structure a data structure like stack queue linked list graph and tree we can perform amortized analysis on data structure while asymptotic notation is performed over a particular algorithm like sorting searching etc let us assume there is one data structure in which insertion of data is easy but deletion as well as searching of data in that data structure is quite complex so collectively how would you reform your data structure would you call that data structure as difficult easy or medium so amortized analysis will help us to characterize our data structure whether it is difficult in worst operation or not so here data structure shouldn't be labeled as costly because of just one operation which is very costly in that data structure amortized analysis is a method of analyzing the cost associated with a data structure which averages out the worst operation over a time the data structure shouldn't be labeled as costly just because that one operation is performed very occasionally let us understand with an example let's say you want to bake a cake for a bake sale or a baking competition now to bake a cake it is complex process but there are only two major steps in that first step is to mix the batter of cake and second step is to put the cake in an oven for a baking process Let us say mixing the content of cake is a fast process and baking a cake is a slow process and you have only one oven which can fit only one cake at a time so this is the scenario of cake baking what would you call cake making process as an entire process is it a fast process or is it a slow process of course cake making process is a medium process because one is the fast operation and another one is the slow operation so both of them averages out to medium progressing process and neither fast nor do slow now Let us consider you don't want to bake a cake only one but you want to make 100 cakes for the competition so you have two choices to make those 100 cakes first choice is to mix a batter of one cake and bake that cake into an oven once one cake is baked up you have to mix another content of cake and put it inside the oven so you will do all the operations serially in first option that is first mixing the batter and putting a cake inside oven so fast process followed by slow process for first cake again fast process followed by second process or slow of a cake or you have another option 
you can mix the batter of 100 cakes all together and bake one cake at a time in an oven. Because oven is small, it can only fit one cake at a time. So, which approach is faster according to you? Is it a faster to bake 100 cakes serially? Mix one, bake one, mix another, bake another. Or mix all 100 cakes batter together and bake each cake one by one. So the answer is, both of these methods are termed as medium process. Neither too fast nor too slow. And this answer is given by amortized analysis. If you bake 100 cakes sequentially, that means one slow operation, one fast operation will average out a medium operation. If that medium operation is performed sequentially 100 times, so overall the progress or the speed of the process will be medium only. But if you mix all the 100 cakes better together, that means you are performing 100 fast operation all together. Then you are baking one cake at a time which is the slow operation for all 100 cakes. So in the second approach, we are doing 100 fast operation followed by 100 slow operation. The average speed of the second approach is also medium because it is 100 fast process followed by 100 slow process. So in either case, our speed of the approach will be medium, which is given by an amortized analysis. What are the different methods to perform amortized analysis? An accounting method, potential method and an aggregate method. In our current video, we are going to cover the third one, an aggregate method. First two methods will be covered in a separate video lecture. Let us start with an aggregate analysis or an aggregate method for amortized analysis. So in this aggregate method, there are two steps. Step number one, we must show that sequence of n operations takes t of n time in the worst case. Now then we will show each operation takes t of n time on an average. Let us understand what do we mean by this. So here in an aggregate analysis, each operation has the same cost. Let us take one an example to understand. An example is modified stack. Now you remember what is a stack. Stack is a data structure in which you can perform two operations. For example, if stack is an entity, you can directly push an item inside the stack. If you keep on pushing the items inside the stack, top of the stack will change its position. After top of the stack reaches to the sum location, we say stack is now overflowed, we cannot perform push operation. Another operation that you can perform on stack is a pop operation. Whenever you perform pop operation, the last inserted item will be taken out of stack. And the top of the stack is also decremented by 1. If stack is already empty, you cannot perform any pop operation over it. So this is the normal stack, which is a linear data structure which is having two operation which is having in a running in a same constant time. Whenever we perform push element, it first check is whether there is a stack overflow or not. If there is no stack overflow, it will insert an item inside stack. Another operation is pop. It first checks for an underflow. If there is no underflow, it will top remove out the last inserted item out of the stack. So the operations are having constant time, checking a condition and performing an operation. That means only two steps in either case. 
So they are constant in time irrespective of how many times I will perform in searches. It will always do these two steps. So this is big O of N in a time complexity. Now what is modified stack? A modified stack is a stack with multi-pop operation. Now multi-pop operation over stack S if I performed with key, it first checks whether key items are there in stack or not. And it is going to remove top key items from the stack if there is no underflow after the multipop operation. So multipop works this way. If this is my current stack scenario, multipop on stack S with key first check if stack is not empty and key is greater than zero. That means number of items we have to pop out is must be greater than zero. Then we will perform pop operation once and we decrement k by one because we have already removed one operation or one item from stack. And we will keep on performing unless and until stack is completely empty or the number of items that we want to pop is now reached to zero. So multi-pop of S, 3 is taking or popping out the top 3 elements from the stack. Multi-pop of S5 will pop out only 5 elements from the stack. But if we perform multi-pop of S, 8, there are no 8 items in a stack. So if we keep on removing 5 items, after removing or popping 5 items, stack will be now an empty stack. So condition will be false and we have to stop at that location. So after removing five elements, stack becomes an empty. So multi-pop will terminate at that location. So multi-pop of k will either pop top k elements from the stack or it will make a stack empty by popping all the elements from the stack. So whatever the minimum, the size of the stack or k, Whatever the minimum will be there, those many times pop will be called. So multi pop of k, if stack is not empty and k is greater than 0, we call stack dot pop method and decrement k by 1. Multi pop can run for at the most n times because if k is greater than n, multi pop will stop after popping n items and if n is less than k, then at most time it will go with k. But what is the maximum number of time multipop can run is n. So the worst case running time of multipop is big O of n. So typically, in typical analysis, if I say that if I run multipop statement n times, it will take big O of n square because one multipop is having worst case big O of n. And if I'm going to run it n times, it will be n into big O of n, which is ultimately big O of n square. But this is basically not true. Because once you perform multipop of n elements, if I again call multipop with n elements, it will work in one step because stack is already empty in this case. So we have nothing to pop off in a second call of multipop. So irrespective of how many times I call multipop, after one time it will always take time big O of 1. Because after checking a condition, it is not going inside the loop but it is terminating. So at most time, multipop will take for calling n times is big O of n. So for any value of n, the sequence of multipop, pop or push operation will take big O of n time. So using an aggregate analysis, T of n by n, that is big O of n by n is equal to big O of 1. This says that as stack has an amortized cost is big O of 1 per operation. An operation of push will take big O of 1 time. An operation of pop 
will take big O of one time and on an average multi pop is also big O of one with the help of aggregate analysis. Thank you everyone for watching this video. This is Munira Topia signing up.